Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Voikovich family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Fall in love with autumn with PJ's new seasonal lattes. Our pumpkin latte brings you all the flavors of a pumpkin pie with hints of cinnamon and nutmeg, like your favorite holiday dessert in a cup. And our s'mores latte with flavors of toasted marshmallows, warm milk chocolate, and graham cracker cinnamon is sure to bring back campfire memories. The PJ's Fall Seasonal Lattes, available at your local PJ's only for a limited time. Palmetto cheese. Are you ready to be entertained? Because if you are, this is the show for you. Welcome to Primetime Sports. I'm your host, Scott Alexander, and I'm ready to have some fun today because we're going to talk all the local sports here. We're going to get into it, but I'm going to tell you, right, let's start with the NFL playoffs right now because how is it any better, it, unless the Saints are in it, than to have Joe Burrow, the LSU legend, going to his second straight AFC championship game this Sunday afternoon, it's going to be blast. The Chiefs are in there for the fifth straight time, and that's going to be great. That says 6.30 Eastern, so it's 5.30 start here locally. So that, check that out. And also the other side is going to be before that. The 49ers are at the Eagles. That's going to be around 1 o'clock, and that is going to be a great matchup. These are the four best teams, in my opinion. Hey, we're going to talk a lot with that, but Frank Duffy, he knows the NFL very well. We're going to talk to him towards the end of the show. Also, Fletcher Mackle is going to come on, and we're going to chat about the Pelicans, what they're doing. And also, they have a four-game losing streak, but you know those two guys you see right there are integral to this team's success. One of them might be back tonight against the Denver Nuggets, who arguably are the best team in the West. Hey, how about two lane football we're going to get into that a little bit as well but let's move forward how about what's happening Mark Schlesinger is going to be on and he is a guy that has handled the transfer portal so well and I can't wait to talk to him the head coach for UNO and speaking of transfer portals LSU in football but with that guy Brian Kelly number one in the transfer portal after being in the top five in recruiting all season long for the, the high school players and speaking of number one LSU baseball in Jay Johnson's second year he is number one in the country going into the season Congrats to him, and LSU women are still undefeated, 20-0, and that woman right there, Angel Reese, all 20 games, she's had double-doubles, breaking the 19-game streak that was the previous record by Sylvia Fowles from the Tigers. Congrats to Angel. Congrats to Kim Mulkey. We have a great show. It's called Primetime Sports. Get ready and stay tuned. Sundays at 6.30 p.m. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. You know, we've had a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches lately. Last week we had Michael Pratt, of course, the great two-lane quarterback, and two great legendary coaches, John Brady and, of course, Tim Floyd. We've been having a lot of that lately. But I want to get back to what's going on here, the sports you love in New Orleans, the Saints, the Pelicans, LSU Tigers, Tulane Green Wave, UNO Privateers, etc. So we're going on the best. The guy who can talk about them all, his name is Fletcher Mackle. He has been with WDSU for 20 years. Can you believe it's been that long? He and his twin brother, Travers, have both been there for almost that time. Travers joined right after that. But here he is again. He came on right in May when he came back from COVID, and we're back again. Good to see you, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for the How nice. Been, man? Good. Thanks for the nice introduction. Well, speaking of you getting in, I, I have never really talked about this because I, you know, I was living in Atlanta at the time, but we both went to the same high school about a decade apart. <laughs> but um, when, you, when, you, when you got out of school, right, you went to Loyola, 
and you graduated. What did you do in the media right after that? I was always curious about that. So I actually went to Delgado first to yeah. play baseball for Joe I Sherman. I played baseball. Yeah, right. so I played baseball for Joe Sherman at Delgado. Right. And I love Joe. He was like kind of like talk about like going from being a boy to a man. I mean, he definitely one of my was, favorite guys. Yeah, no, he's great. He was a, a huge impact on my life. We're still good friends today. Then my brother and I finished playing at Loyola. Yeah. And then my first television job was in Alexandria, Louisiana, as my Loyola jersey. There you um, go. Look at you. And so uh, right on target. There it is. Right. So, um, uh, so I worked at KALB TV in uh -huh. Alexandria, Louisiana, which was a great TV station, um, a great place to start, kind of go and learn and mess up and figure out who you are and what you're well, doing. Well, most people do the small market, Sure, right? sure. You're my brother went, my right. brother went to Monroe, yeah. and I went to Alexandria. But it was a great, a great people, because the one thing you want to have is like institutional knowledge and people there that know what they're doing. Because a lot of the smaller markets that you go to in Meridian and Lake Charles and Alexandria and Biloxi, it's an overwhelming amount of young people. And when you've got all young people figuring it out, that's cool. But you want to have somebody there who's kind of the established veteran who can kind of show you the way. Yeah, yeah. And so I went to a place in Alexandria that had these pillars of the community and like these institutions of journalism in central Louisiana. So it was a great place. And I, I was there for four years. And then I uh, started at WDSU, like you said, in, in August of 2022. Well, in August of 2002. 2002. So, yeah, 2020, so you're 20 years, yeah, 20 two years. decades. That's the thing. You still look so young. But I want to say this. When you first get the gig, and I know you're applying probably a, a number of places, but when it comes up that it's New Orleans, and you're like, look at that it's shot. It's the worst headshot ever. My goodness. Yeah. I don't know. So you know what the like, funny thing is? is that? that? They flipped that photo. Like, to this day, I, I'm not it's vain. Backwards. It's like It's backwards. It's like, mirrored it's, backwards. It's one of those things, like, I look at that and say it doesn't even look like me, because they flipped it. it in the 20 years, every year we do headshots, Yeah. and, and I swear... I, I could care less about any of them. I see them, I go, great, it looks like last year's. Right. That one I saw, I go, is that, is that me? It's, it's you back. And they flipped it because yes, they yeah. needed to put people it's, around it. There, right. So when they flip it, I'm like, wait, my hair looks part of the wrong way. My eyes are like, don't That's look funny. right. So I You're see. You're the only one that would notice I that, see it and go, that, that doesn't look like me. Well, what was yeah. it like getting a job in your hometown? Because it's one thing. Like I have, I work, I work kind of right into regional mm -hmm. sports and the national sports. But coming home though, when you're young and getting a gig like you got, I mean, you're, you're a sportscaster at one of the three big networks that you know yeah. I grew up with, and Fox came much later. But what was that like? It was great. It was like a dream come true because I did grow up here. I mean, I grew up right up by the lakefront, 5510 Chatham Drive, right where the new Holy Cross is. It used to be Gainus out there and yeah. Cabrini yeah. Grammar School. Oh. And so that, I mean, that was my street. And, and my dad, you know, was a, a golf pro at a local country club here. Yep. So yep. he met some of the people in sports. And we knew, you know, because a lot of athletes play golf. So I had a chance to meet them. And it was always like a dream come true to my brother and I played sports, not professionally, obviously, but we liked playing sports. And then to get back in the coming cover uh, that's my over 35 baseball yeah, he's still league. playing sports that's yeah, yeah, impressive look Sunday, at that that's my over 35 ahead. baseball league yeah. and uh so we uh so to get back to come cover the saints and the i got here right when the pelicans were coming right, here right, and then right. lsu won a national championship my second year here yeah. tulane went to the hawaii bowl in 02 so it was a great time to come back and and we had a boss at the time my brother and I always thought whichever one of us got back here first, that's probably going to eliminate the other one, which would, which would stink because we both had kind of thought, God, it'd be great to work in New Orleans. But we had a boss that said, I want to hire both of you. And oh, you meant eliminate from the same station or yeah, the same city? Just maybe the same city or the same station. as my brother, and there I am. Um, see, he was back at the station. I was, I was a year and a half at home for COVID. See, your hair is similar there. Yeah. And I've always wondered this, when, you, when twins go at it, like when they decide, hey, we want to look different. Like here, his hair becomes a little longer here. Yeah. Because that's how I used to. So you know what's funny about that picture is we bought each other. That's our birthday. Is that, is that, is that we, not a plan? We you bought, bought the same book? We bought each other the same. Like we bought each other a few gifts. But one of the gifts we bought, we each bought without knowing. I didn't talk to his wife. He didn't talk to anybody. We both. I'm like, I think Travers would like that book. And he bought it that's for crazy, me. That's crazy, man. So we thought it was that's, crazy. That really yeah. is crazy. That's a good story. Thanks for saying that part. Because. I'm the youngest of five, and I don't. My siblings are like I, I always. I feel bad for people that don't have a, a sibling, right? Because I mean, I think it's it's something in life, and I sure. you know I have a lot of friends that don't. But the fact is, is that uh, I don't know what I would do without mine. But they're much older, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the youngest. I was definitely the mistake, six years <laughs> behind everybody else. But I always wonder what it would be like to have a twin. I hate the question. I think it's. Like, what's it like to be a twin? Because that's just like, you don't know anything differently. I right? don't. No, you're you know, right. That's my answer. Is, is that, it? Yeah, because, I well, mean, here's the thing. Because I've never known life without somebody else. Right. 
And, and not only that, but here's the thing, but we've also been close. Now, not only did I come into the world with somebody in my earliest memories, the only memories I have are with somebody right next to me, the same age. Well, that's just, it. Just like me, playing with me, growing up with me. So it's one of those things. Then we went to the same high school, the same college. We both played the same sport. We both got into the same profession. And so, yeah, so I don't know what it's like to to not have somebody there. So I don't know what people say, what's it like to be a twin? It's well, like. That's the, well, I didn't want to ask that question. Yeah. But here's what I want to ask. What's the best part about being a twin? Uh, to have somebody there that you can always, good ideas, bad ideas, do you like this? You know, kind of, you know, people they say, look in the mirror, you know, like, you're like, oh, I have to look in the mirror and ask myself, am I doing what makes me happy? Is this, like, I have somebody there that I can verbalize it with, or that's an actual person that is closer to me than anybody that I can, that he can tell me if I did something that may have been out of line, he could say, hey, don't do that again, get back in line. Or, hey, I'm glad you did that, where I could think that was the right thing to do, but they have somebody there cool. to tell you or to say hey I think you crossed the line go apologize to that person you have kind of like a, a, in, in human form a conscience that is there not wondering you know did I do the right thing did I do the wrong thing and kind of the man in the mirror talk the man in the mirror is somebody that is actual human I know twins for me. are supposed to generally be very close but I, I look at y'all compared to some of the other ones I know y'all are really close and it's really cool like y'all have remained close I, I, it's, to correct me if I'm wrong, but y'all did live, even, if not in the same house, yeah, at least look at in some this, of these pictures. That's, that's 09. It, that's the De La Salle Hall of Fame. The jackets are a little too big, but uh, but that's 2009. Uh, the De La Salle oh, Hall of Fame. Was that you got inducted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. De La Salle Hall of Fame induction. Leon Canizero was there. His team, Leon, Can the former DA, was a wrestler. And the, yeah, the Blue 69. Jackets. Yeah, 69. the Blue Jackets were for the team uh -huh. that went in. So his team as a state champion went in. That's and then Travis cool. and I got the uh, the Brother Ambrose, like the Community Service Award. Uh, we, backed door, we backdoored into the no, Hall of Fame. No, but you're athletes too. Hey, but right. the bottom line is when you um, – when you – you lived in the same house, or yeah. was it? I mean, even after college, I'm talking about like. Yeah. So when my like, brother, yeah, very strange. Thank you for bringing up the weird. No, no, no. It's no not I'm kidding. Weird. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm saying kidding. the cool I'm part kidding. because usually I, I'm using a weird analogy. I just thought of this. Sometimes tennis players, you know, when they they've been playing since they're six and they've been going to, the, you know, they they live tennis and they don't even go to the high school in town. They go like Jennifer Capriati and I know right. some local ones that are have done it and they get burned out. You know, has there ever been like a point like, dude? I'm tired. Uh, we we got to branch out because you two, I love your closeness. And that's the thing. And I hope y'all never lose that closeness. But I wondered if that was ever, you ever heard that from other twins? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think some twins I find, I can't believe they're that different, that they've chosen different paths in life. Yeah. You know, one's a doctor, one's a lawyer, one's a businessman, and one's an artist. I mean, and they've gone different paths. That's fine. We just always had similar interests. And I don't know if it's because you know, we followed each other, or I liked what he did and I followed him. I definitely think that there's aspects of that, that maybe I pushed him in a direction, or he pulled me in a direction, and I thought, well, that's a good idea, or, or, or that, you know, or that's a bad idea, let's go this way, or vice versa. But, uh, but yeah, but no, but we did live together. You mentioned that when we first got back here, I got back here right in August of 02. Yeah. He got hired as soon as we had a news reporter opening in, in May of 03, because I said we had a boss that said, I want to hire both of you. Right. You're both locals. I think it'll be unique. I think you're both professional. It's not a gimmick. I think you both deserve to be here. So she goes, I don't care if you look alike, sound alike, and you have the same name. I'm gonna do it. And, and at first, I remember my brother passed on jobs at the time. He was working in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. He went from Monroe to Jackson, yeah. and he passed on a job in Memphis. Yeah. And then he passed on a job in Vegas. Wow. And he goes, if this doesn't come to fruition, yeah, right, right. I'm I, gonna be the biggest idiot yeah, for right, passing right, right, on right, good right, jobs right. here. And it's so, like Kirby Smart in a way. He right. passed on some big ones in Georgia. Probably right, came so through. it came through. So when he got back here, that was at the real estate market. You could buy houses. You know, that was, I hate to say this. You don't have to explain right. where we live together. Let's stop here. But, no, no, but, I but, think, okay. but we did, but we had, we, we bought a, a double. So right. we technically. You lived on each side. Yeah. So yeah. I, my address was 4,700. Right. His was 4,700. <laughs> yeah. Fletcher, okay. That's, right. That's so, pretty funny. So like we it. didn't live together. We bought an old New Orleans double and I lived on one side and he lived on the other side. I had my address and my bills. He had his address and his bills, but technically it was under the same roof, but it was an old New right. Orleans. I didn't expect novel. to spend a dozen minutes on the twin, yeah. but I'm gonna spend one more. So All keep right. it succinct. Because this is interesting to me, and everybody's like, "Dude, this is a sports show, right?" I know. Uh, I talk a lot. No, sorry. But, but here's the fact. Just keep it. 
the thing about the hair, because I noticed similar hair. Yeah. Does a twin come in and finally say, you know what, I got to be myself? Because I've noticed that since I've been here, he's had the more kind of yeah. stylish, you know, longer hair. Yours is getting a little bit now in the back. Yeah. I like it. I mean, you kept it like nice and tight. So was there a, a cognizant moment that you, you, one of y'all decided, hey, we're going to look a little different? Like so right there. in college, we looked a little different. His hair was really long in college. His hair was long enough to wear a ponytail, and I used to cut mine even shorter, like a two guard or a three guard. So in college, we looked nothing alike. <laughs> wow. So I I've always anchored sports, so I had kind of the picture you see now, just a little bit more of like the anchor haircut, like the regular boys regular, whatever you'd call it. Right. Travis, since he was a reporter for so long, he started growing his hair because he was out in the field, he wasn't on the anchor desk, yeah, right. and, and he could get away with a little bit more. So then when they promoted him to anchor in 2019, that's when he kind of went with a little bit more of... He tightened like, the quaff yeah, a little yeah, bit, but he, he still definitely, had the waves in there. But he like still, now, and, so, and then during COVID, I was at home for a year and a half, so I'm like, I don't think they have a haircut. I'm, so I kind of grew my hair a little longer during COVID. Well, I promise we're going to talk sports now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and there you go. There's the two. There's the hair, yeah. All right, so moving on. <laughs> right now, if you had to say what's the biggest sports story in New Orleans today, what would that be? I think it's I think it's it should be the Pelicans in, in getting back on track. But I think it's Sean Payton and where is he gonna go? Yeah. That's that's what I think is the biggest talker right now. Because I think the Saints oh, because of the first round pick, possibly yeah, everything that comes with it. I think the Saints want the ghost of Sean Payton gone. Like I think that he still is such right, a right, huge right, right, right. figure. Yeah, he does he does hover. And here think about this. If he goes back to network television yeah. and Dennis struggles next year, right. everybody's gonna be saying, yeah. Bring him back, get yeah. him back, yeah. Mickey, go get him. I mean, I think they just Pay want, him 25 million. Right. I think they, but if he goes and coaches the Denver Broncos, he, it, that chapter is officially, over. officially over. over. I mean, last year there was talk of Drew Brees coming out of retirement. Even though I don't think it was real, it kind of hovered it over hovers. the organization. So I think right now, I, I think, look, it was a, it was a bad year. They, they underachieved. It was disappointing. But I think that just continuing to hover, he's such a huge figure yeah. that they just got to move on. So that, to me, is the biggest sports story right now. Well, I mean, that begs my next question because I was thinking, you know, there's a moment in your career that you know you might not do anything cooler than you're doing right at this moment. And that came for me at 30 years old. And I remember being – with Michael Jordan every game he did for three years, but particularly 96. Okay. I'm talking about playoff game because we did. I was Craig Sager's producer, so I remember going, we were with every Bulls playoff game, first round, it was it was the Heat. Second round was the Knicks. Third round was the Magic when they swept Shaq. And in the, in the finals was the Sonics. And I remember, like, this is it's never going to be cooler because I'm sitting on the bench, literally. We're right there at the corner. Robin's here. I'm here. Sager's here. Every game. And I'm thinking, for you, that your moment has to be the Super Bowl, being from New Orleans. Was that? Would you say that's your biggest moment? Yeah, no doubt. 20 years at WDSU. I mean, I can only imagine. I love, like, those Bulls teams, and yeah. I love – I've read the books. I watched yeah. the documentary. I mean, I really – I saw myself a little bit in the background yeah, of the documentary. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's fascinating stuff. Yeah. And so I can only imagine what it would have been like to cover that and be – live it every day. Yeah. But, yeah, of course, the Saints in the Super Bowl. In my 20 years – look, there's been some big moments. I've, I've been here – that's Alvin Moore, I our sports Alvin. photography. He's one of my great. favorite guys. And yeah. so that's he and I on – literally right there. So it's funny. Let me explain that picture. Yeah. So – Peyton Manning is, th that's the other end of the field. Peyton Manning is driving to maybe put the dagger in the Saints, right, take right. the lead, yes. and, 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 and be the local hometown guy who beats the Saints in the Super Bowl. So all the other photographers went down to the other end of the Tracy field. Tracy Porter side. <laughs> in, no, no, no. They went down to get Peyton coming at him. Okay. Okay. You went to you. You got to so he. That, oh. So he was. So he stayed. And at a certain point, I went over because Scott Walker, who was our news anchor yeah. at the time, was now the elected leader in Jefferson Parish. He goes. Go tell Alvin. He goes, the other photographers already went down there. They're going to get Peyton throwing the game-winning touchdown. He goes, you better get Alvin down there. This is going to be history. I'm like, you're right. Let me go over there and tell Alvin. And Alvin goes, just let him, let him cross midfield. Let me give him a couple more plays. And then literally right after that, Tracy Porter picked it and came almost right at Alvin to that corner of the end zone. So he was the only local photographer that, yeah, that has Tracy coming like right at him. Everybody else has it from – a hundred yards away, That's and he has this. Cool. We still have it. It's such That's an amazing shot cool. of Peyton. And if he'd wait, if if he would have listened to me, he would have put his camera down and gone and run. Because the photographers and try to shoot. He'd still be dog cussing you. Yeah, with the with the, the photographers shoot with the action coming towards them, not usually from behind. And uh, and so yeah, so that was good. I really got yeah. to like that guy. Uh, there was in the three years at the Greenbrier. You know, you kind of oh, yeah, bond yeah. a little differently because yeah, sure. you're on the road on, in a very. He's so laid place. back. He's so and, laid and back. And he's one of my favorite guys. But no, but the Super Bowl. The Saints winning the Super Bowl is the biggest 
a, no, the biggest deal in my professional career. But look, I was there for the three LSU national championships. I was there for, for 03, 07 in the 19th season. And the Borough one was just unbelievable to be yeah. on the field when they beat Clemson. I was in 09 at the College World Series when LSU won the College World Series. Yeah. I mean, there's been some spectacular moments, yeah. moments yes. but there's that, look, the Saints You're are You're a New Orleans are. guy. Yeah. You like LSU, but you didn't go there. Right. I went to LSU, so those are equal to me as the Saints. I could see yeah. that's got to be for you. No, that's it. But that's let's it. talk about what's happening right now. Let's talk about the Pelicans real okay. quick because this team – has you know we know now how good they can be when they're healthy yeah. and they you know they've lost four in a row but they've had their two top stars out and that's mm -hmm. meaningful but the fact is is we both have a bond in basketball I've known that since I moved back 10 years ago you love this team you, you like them win or lose you like you like the NBA but what do you like about this team so much because I'm curious because I, I know my answer right away what would yours be um, what I like best about the team is the culture they've built. That I've covered the team since they moved here. Yes. I moved here to work years. at WDSU when they moved here. And there was a lot of lip service. And you wanted to believe, oh, these guys believe. These guys want to be here. These guys have bought in. But now when you go out there, it, it's kind of a palpable positivity, yes. if you will. Like, they really want to be here. Like, these guys are all in. They've got the right coach. They've got the right executives. They've got the right players. That this is a special place that can do special things now. That, look, when Anthony Davis was here, he was one of the five best players in the NBA. But once he got with Clutch, there was always the, does he have one foot out the door? Does he really want to be here? Baron Davis, does he really want to be here? Chris Paul towards the end. Chris Paul was amazing when he first right. got here. But then he and his brother, the, kind of the behind the scenes yeah. talking, does he want to be here or not? There's none of that here now. I mean, there's none of it. These guys are in, they built something special in a small market and it could really grow. I, look, I think the Pelicans, Denver, or Memphis are coming out of the West. Those are the three best teams they in the Western so Conference. Good. Right. And it's I think so that much fun to watch those teams. And once right. they get healthy, I think the Pelicans are going to finish in, in the top four. I don't know if they're yeah. going to get Denver surging, but I think they could still finish two, three, surging four. Surging in January doesn't mean surging in April. I promise right. you. I know. We both know this, and we've both been around. Uh, I think the momentum at the end of the season, and we have to be healthy, and the leadership, obviously, McCollum, but it's the other pieces, and that's what I love. This is what I loved about this team before you know the major major injuries but even without Ingram you could put combinations of sure. players and do different things like you have five defensive guys you could throw in yeah like you, you could know, have Larry that, and Jose and right and Dyson I mean Dyson, Dyson Daniels is 19 yeah, years yeah. old how good is he going to be when he's 23 right, right. at 19 and Herb right Jones, now you mention him those yeah. five right there Herb Jones is my one this year and I love Herb Jones everything about him but Herb Jones is the one that I feel like has taken the biggest step back this year yeah. because here's the thing I think he needs to have those offensive pieces around him, like yes. Zion yes, and does. Ingram yes, and does. CJ, to really flourish. And the other thing about Herb that I don't necessarily love is, and I know it sounds terrible to say, but he came in as a 23-year-old, polished, mature player. His ceiling is not that high. Yeah, he right. is what he is. Like, and Najee, to me, has almost caught him this year. Like, I think Najee. Well, a compliment. Yeah, you're right. I think you're Najee right. is right. just as good as Herb. And I think he may wow. be better because he's a better offensive player than Herb. Like, I think Herb Jones is really, really good. I just don't think Herb Jones is a 35-minute-a-night guy on a no, championship no, 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 team. No, no. He, I think he's a Najee-like role player on a good team. And, and so that's the one thing that I have a concern about. If if they get into a seven-game series like in the Western Conference Finals or in the Finals, there may be teams like Milwaukee almost played Herb off the floor. They just let him shoot, and, and, and it wasn't great. And he didn't do a great job. Like, he's not going to defend Giannis. Nobody's going to defend Giannis, but he couldn't even slow him down. And so Herb is my one this year that I really like him as a, a person and a culture guy. And I just think he should be more like a Jose role player as a 15-minute-a-night guy, not a 35-minute-a-night guy. In two minutes or less, tell me about this uh... – Two-lane season, but more the two-lane game and the excitement at the end and your thoughts about that. The two-lane cotton ball or two-lane basketball? Two-lane football. We okay. haven't talked got, to you well, in look, six look, months. Look, here's the thing. Let I love the basketball team, Basketball too. just played Houston, and it was like the best atmosphere I've seen I there in there, years. I was there, baby. Right, I was there. Right. But the fact is, I wanted to, because the 45-30 deficit, mm -hmm. and come back, I had Michael Pratt last week. I had him on in June when he told me, flat out, sitting here right here where you are, we're going to compete for the championship. And I did one of these um, eye emojis. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, well, I believe you. Yeah. You seem like you know what you're talking about. But I've had each captain on. Yeah. Well, through the season, Nick Anderson, right? They beat Kansas State. I've had them all. And they all said the same thing. They had these meetings. They said, we're going to do this. And I didn't believe it until I heard all four of them say it with conviction. Yeah. So, so yeah. No, it was, it was it was one of those seasons. It was I would put it up there 
LSU winning championships was special. This was almost on equal footing for me as somebody who grew up here. I used to go run the ramps at the Dome same, during Tulane same, games. Right. So I, I like Tulane, and I want to see them do well. My college roommates, when I was at Loyola, they were at Tulane. It, it, watching that comeback Look at this special. footage at the oh, Pelicans game. How much yeah, fun? it's unbelievable. But to me, it's one of those things. It was one of the more special moments. It's a top five moment in my professional career to watch them get to the Cotton Bowl and then pull off one of the greatest comebacks in bowl game history. And we're going to be talking about that forever. Not in five years, 10 years, 20 years. That's a moment that we'll be talking about in sports here 50 years from That's now. That's what I told Pratt that last week. I said, you know, I still talk about 73, yeah. 14 nothing. I was on my brother's shoulders getting a chin strap from Mark Olivari after the game. And I still think it's one of my greatest moments ever. These kids that grow up today will always remember being on that field yeah. after the game. Wherever they go, 80. wherever they go, yeah. whatever they do in life, they produced one of the greatest comebacks in college football. Those guys from Boise State still talk about that Fiesta Bowl yeah. almost 20 years later. This is going to live forever Guess in, who in the sports. Guess associate producer for that game? Right here, baby. <laughs> Boise in Oklahoma. That was a great yeah. moment, too. Uh, hey, but you know we give gifts here, right? Yeah. I know most shows give gifts. We give two. Sweet. I'll take Big, it. Big nice gift certificate. Right. Shays Della okay. Shays. You know that place. I love it. I went with Jeff Duncan and Kat Terrell recently. Nice. I think we went on your gift certificate. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So. And then, yeah, I need to go. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even use the, Hey, Evan, how about let me use one? Um, <laughs> just kidding. And put task performance. I wore I wore the task today. I got the task hoodie on. You're the best ad. So. You're the best ad we have for I like, these I like task. So. <laughs> what can stuff. I say? And I like you. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> Sorry for all the personal talk to no, start. No, I, I wanted to get into it, and it was interesting. Um, uh, my next two guests might have to suffer a little bit, but they, <laughs> they'll probably be like, I can get out early. That's good. Uh, thank you. Fletcher Mackle, WDSU. Check them out each and every day, and uh, obviously covering all the main sports here in New Orleans. Hey, coming up next, we're going to have Mark Schlesinger. He is the coach for the UNO Privateers, and don't forget Frank Duffy. He's going to be right after that, because like my man Fletcher here, he knows sports in New Orleans and loves to talk about it. We'll be right back. The owners of the Delachais Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachais, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachais, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans, my, oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll. At the city lane, oh my, let's roll. Let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll. At the city lane, the home of rock and roll. <laughs> Fall in love with autumn with PJ's new seasonal lattes. Our pumpkin latte brings you all the flavors of a pumpkin pie with hints of cinnamon and nutmeg, like your favorite holiday dessert in a cup. And our s'mores latte with flavors of toasted marshmallows, warm milk chocolate, and graham cracker cinnamon is sure to bring back campfire memories. The PJ's fall seasonal lattes, available at your local PJ's only for a limited time. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. That was so much fun, Fletcher. I didn't know I could talk about a twin for 14 minutes, but we just managed it. But right now we're going to talk basketball because that's what we love down here. Besides football, there is a basketball that plays a couple schools here. Uh, well, several schools we're not talking about, and of course the New Orleans Pelicans. But the UNO Privateers deserve your respect. Their coach has been here since 2011. He's the all-time winningest coach for UNO. He's been here a while. He's had an NCAA tournament visit 2017. He's been the coach of the year, and he's still hanging around doing his thing. His name is Mark Schlesinger, and when it comes to X's and O's, I don't know if I know anybody better than my man right here, Sluss. How you doing, buddy? Scotty, yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me again. You're looking good. You got, you're looking dapper. You got a smile. You're, you're looking good. I don't know. It's, you got some fresh look to you. Well, it's a blessing. I mean, every day you get to wake up and, and do what you love. It's a it's an awesome experience. You know, it's good practices, bad practices, they're all great practices. You get a chance to teach, coach, uh, try to impact lives and, and, and change lives. And it's been a blessing. This has been a year that, that's one that I've got to coach a ton. I've got a lot more to coach, and we're going to keep working at it. You know, impacting lives and changing lives is something I think about with you because, I mean, you listen, 
besides the coaching part, you do it with your family. I mean, you've adopted a couple kids, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Tony, and you have Bubba and Noah. And I've known them since they were little babies, man. And it, it's funny to watch them grow through Facebook and Twitter. I see some pictures. What's that like? I mean, being a dad, like, you know, for these last, you know, dozen years. Yeah, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to be able to uh, to be blessed to adopt three kids from, from the Department of Children and Family Services and, and a local uh, with, with, with Bubba, Noah, and, and Bo, and then just to have them a part of our community, be able to have them a part of our program, uh, for our, our guys to be my son's heroes. Yeah. Uh, my son wears number 10 uh, because of Derek St. Hilaire, one of our former Derek players. Derek St. Hilaire last who, year, who right. He, uh, who he admires and thinks the world of, and those are the things that you dream of that kids are able to do and experience. And to be able to see that happen, you know, wh whether he's playing for Nord or he's playing for the Heinz Huskies, it's pretty awesome. So what's, what's, what's New Orleans been like for you since you got here? I mean, I know, you know, you coached at Northwestern for a while. In fact, I, I was with you back in like 2001 or two when the first ever playing game, I was right. with Rick Pitino and, and Tim Brando, and you were coaching with McConathy over there. Did Y'all won that one, right? We did. You won the very first playing game in Dayton, Ohio. I remember that. But when you got to Louisiana and now you're down in New Orleans, what has been – you've been here – you're a native now. You've been here a dozen years. So what's that like? It's amazing. You know, I think that, that New Orleans lives in you and you live through it. And I think the more that you give back to the community, the more that you give back to the city, uh, the more that they give back to you. And, you know, there's so many things that – are positive. You can fight through the potholes and you can fight through uh, the trash and some of the things that we that we do because we love our culture, we love our people, we love everything that we represent and that's a big piece of it and something that's very very important to us. Uh, when we came here we felt God had called us to be here and we knew that if we would continue to uh, try to positively impact people we could uh, hopefully make a difference one day in our little piece of this big picture of this community. See, so you're saying in Bloomington, Indiana, y'all didn't have potholes this big. Like, we prefer not, to call them baby swimming pools. Not this big, not this big for all sure. Right, right. We had some, but not <laughs> this a big. Couple. Yeah, yeah, a couple, not every block. Uh, let's move on, Get highs and lows, and I know where the high is going because we were all high on your 2017 team, but when you, first thing that comes to your mind, when you think in your tenure here, as the winningest coach in UNO privateer basketball history, what are the highs and the lows in, the, in this thing, if you, if you don't mind me asking, yeah, the lows yeah, as no. well? Yeah, no, the, the highs, obviously, being able to uh, take a program that, uh, when I arrived in 2011, really was a ship without uh, a rudder, like no real purpose. We didn't know where we were going, what we were doing. Uh, we were an independent, be able to navigate through uh, some NCA legislation penalties, different things that we had to get through, to be able to find a conference home in the Southland Conference, to be able to push through that. Uh, really reestablish and have a renaissance of our program uh, to get back to a championship level was our was our course. Uh, our goal was always to be in in competition for championships at the end of the season. To be able to have a year like last year where uh, you know we went uh, eight went 18 games, we finished second in the league, and lose the championship on the last day uh, to a very good Nichols team. To be able to have 12 out of 13 in a row wins uh, during that conference run, it was conference mag run. magical, man. It, was, it really was. It was. It was great. And, yeah. and but you know the low was not being able to close that out. You know <laughs> to be able to be so close, to be able to know that you want that so much for these student athletes uh, and for the families to experience that, and that that's one of the things that you just you know it eats at you. It eats at and, you. And yeah. you know and sometimes people get confused that. The lows are bad. Um, the lows are learning the opportunities. And uh, there was a time two years ago when we when we went through a COVID year with uh, had the most injuries we'd ever had. We dressed out seven many night many nights. Wow. Uh, before wow. before seven. before that That's was like my eight, my before that was team. a COVID All thing. Right. But you know COVID happened that March. Then we went January and February through that with a lot of injuries. And but it taught us to stay the course. And we really feel like that year really set the course for last year where we were able to uh, stay through, develop guys through that, through that time, and really set us up for a championship run last year. Uh, now this year, uh, w this is as wide open as this league has ever been. You look it at, is the, wide at open. the current My goodness, yes, I just looked at them last night. Everybody is within three games of first place, uh, and we're not even halfway there. And just the, the opportunity where we lose a tough game at Corpus on the road on Saturday. Yeah. They're in first place. They dropped both their games on the road they uh, last week yeah. to the last play, two-place teams. Yeah. 
we needed to close out the two games at home last week, lose an 11 game home winning streak last week and didn't finish it. Uh, so now this week we play Southeastern, one of our big rivals at Southeastern Thursday. Twice, right? Yeah. Back here on Saturday. An unbelievable opportunity for us to get back and compete to hopefully put two losses on them, move us closer to the top, and get back playing great basketball. But that that's the beauty of league play. You know, you go through. Uh, I, I have a friend at Kansas. I never he never would have dreamed that they would drop three in a three row. Three in a row. And so you go through these you go through these ups and downs, and figuring out how to navigate the lows equally as great as the highs is one of the great part parts about coaching. You know, it's funny. Well, I remind, remind me of something because Bill Self. We've done a lot. Well, I used to work with Tim Brando in basketball, too. We've done so many games, and we've had a record of 21-0 with him at Tulsa. Uh, he got to the Elite Eight. We did every game. Illinois. We got, you know, obviously Illinois got to the Elite Eight. And then, obviously, the Final Four with Kansas. But we were up there. He was on his four-game sabbatical uh, when we did the Kansas-Kansas State game. And so he comes up to the press box and, you know, Brando's like, hey, we'll just have you for like 10 minutes. We had him on air for, for the whole first half. He's like, but he's asking, I said, I said, well, how's this team going to be this year? He goes, um, we're going to probably be a little down. And I said, oh, like ranked around 10th. And I said, 10th? I, I, that's, I'm never going to be that down. I was like, like so he, three, three losses in a row just doesn't happen. I think that's his yeah. longest losing streak since he's been there. I think he's done it a couple of times. But that's funny because you guys had that great three-game winning streak. And now you came in with the three games. And – do you, do you live with these losses every time you go home? Because I can't imagine. I played intramurals, and I've lived with them until the very next game. So you have to be going home like, what could I have done differently? What you do, and, and, I, and obviously you, you are uh, uber competitive. That's what puts you in the position you're in. You want the best uh, for your team. You want them to experience that. You want the faculty, the students, the staff, the alumni, everybody to have great joy in it. Uh, a funny side note, my four-year-old Bo, we're getting ready. We lose Saturday night. We're getting ready to go to bed. We're saying our prayers. And uh, he wanted me to go first. I said, mine. We get to him. And he <laughs> said, you know, I want to thank you for the privateers for being tough. Whoa. And then he thank, thank, thank for being able to spend time with his grandmother, uh, his nene that day. And then the next thing he said, he prayed that the privateers would win the next game. And so then I just was thinking, like, this, this four-year-old, like, what, what, is, what is getting ingrained into this four-year-old that he's praying for wins? Well, we all did, and Saints, but we didn't get an answer very correct. often in the 70s. It, it, and it's for it's sure. one of those things that, that um, your family lives it with you. Yeah. And they're, they're part of it, That's and so they cool. understand the emotions that go with it. Even as a little child, as a four-year-old child, he understands the emotion, the ebb and the flow, uh, the good and the bad that goes with it. Um, you, know, you sure that wasn't your your former assistant coach, <laughs> Bo A. Bear, Bobby Son, praying with no, you? No, <laughs> okay. no. Okay, with an X on the end. Does yours have an X Mine on the end? Mine has an X as nice, well. Nice, cool. So. But it's part of it's part of it. The ebb and flow, the good and the bad. It's part of uh, me as a dad and me as a leader. I think our team and our student athletes and my family being able to see a relentlessly positive person all the time, being able to fight through the good and the bad and figure out how to navigate and problem solve. You know, toughness is a choice and you have to figure out how to fight through and, and win uh, the right way and then figure out how to lose and get back up and get back at it the next day. Speaking of navigation, you've navigated that transfer portal pretty well. And I'm gonna say, uh, I, I was talking about some of your players last night with you, so I pulled up some footage and I thought I was gonna watch it for like 10 minutes and I watched it for an hour. I was really fascinated. This guy, Jordan Johnson, puts the ball in the basket. I mean, puts the basket, ball in the basket. Last year, you had Derek St. Hilaire, who averaged 21 a game. Now you got a guy shooting 46% from three-point land, averaging 16 points a game. Tell me what he brings to this team, what makes him special. You know, Jordan has a very extremely calm demeanor where, where Derek was, um, he was fire, fire all the time. You knew up, what yeah. his personality was all yeah. the time. This uh, is a silent Jordan, assassin. Jordan right is here. for sure a silent assassin. Yeah. He comes from a great basketball family. His father, Mingo, played uh, at Memphis and was a great player there. Uh, but just has a calm, cool, collective uh, demeanor to him. And he's been a, you know, a joy to coach. I think he's a fantastic uh, student athlete, not only a great player, but a fantastic student. And we, you know, the transfer portal was funny. It took us a minute to, uh, to figure some pieces of it out. I yeah. think like many of us, there was a learning curve to it. And figuring out guys that match your uh, character, your core values is, is sometimes hard when you have a very short 
uh, dating window. You're going to marry somebody after one or two dates, and it's a very, very short dating window uh, in order to figure out whether you can be a match for them. No, this is very interesting to me because I haven't talked to you about this. I feel like I talk to John Brady about it every day, honestly. But you as a coach that's coaching now, I mean, you could look at this originally and go with all the old-time coaches and be like, I don't like it. You know, we got to re-recruit these guys. But when you learn to use it to your advantage, it can be something. And I know you're a relentless recruiter. You're, tire, you're tireless. You get out there and do it. What's that been like for you to, 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 to have this whole change in the way you recruit? Uh, it's been interesting. I, you know, I, I'm, I don't know that I have a favor either way. I, I really enjoyed the process of – of getting to know guys and their families and their their circle or right. their wheel uh, of like, all like the Troy folks. Green who was there five uh, years. I correct. feel like you know everything about yeah, him. Yeah, I mean he and he's doing fantastic. He's in I love he's that guy. in tons of need playing professionally, having a great experience seeing the world. Uh, unfortunately, he's the last cut of the Pelicans G League team, but this opportunity came up for him, so he's doing fantastic. Yeah, and I appreciate you bringing him up. No, I love him. Uh, but but. You missed the part of being able to get that long-term, deep relationship, recruiting relationship with them. But it doesn't mean that it's less valuable uh, because once you have them, you have them. And your goal is always to be their coach for life, not just coach for, for a season. That is coach for life. And I feel that with you mm -hmm. as much or more than any coach because you do – value them. Every, every coach likes their players. Let's be honest. Not all of them are calling them 10 years from now. That, that's what I loved about Dale Brown. Like, I remember asking him one time, can you name every player you've ever had? And I, I thought he'd say yes, but I said, can you really do it? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I know the last guy on the bench. I even know guys I cut like you. I was like, oh, oh, really? I was like, no, but the fact is, like, that, that means something to you, to the player, man, because they know the guy that they're playing for, if he's going to give a crap about him in 10 years, and then you're that guy. Correct. Yeah, no, it's always the most important piece. I think uh, you're going to be judged in the end by what kind of men they are, what kind of husbands they are, what kind of leaders they are uh, 10 years from now, not necessarily whether they're all conference uh, in 2023. And that's the long-term picture that you hope uh, your coaching life or your ministry, uh, which, uh, whichever lens you look through it for, you, you hope that it's the right reason. You, you said something that just hit me, though, the thing you said about the match as a person. and the people. Because I remember personally as being an agent, you didn't want to ever get that call in the middle of the night of, uh, you know, just so many trouble. He's your guy. You're going to take care of him. But you, you, can, you can bridge that by just kind of knowing you're going to get a certain kind of guy. And I feel that's the way you're going to recruit. You're going to have a guy that can come babysit Bo and Nola and Bub if they had to, right? I mean, these guys I, you can hang around yeah, the house. Yeah, abs absolutely. But I also think it's the expectation of, of – my athletic director and Mr. Tim Duncan, our yes. president, Dr. John Nicklow, our assistant president, Dr. Jim Henderson. Uh, but I think it's the expectation of, of the people, the stakeholders in our university. Uh, again, I mentioned that's the a faculty, right there. the that's students, a the group. staff, and alumni, they have, that's the expectation. I think that they would always rather err on the side of character than, uh, than two more wins. 100%. And I think that that's something that uh, my leaders that are above me have made very clear to me throughout, and we've tried to always follow their their requests and their in the mission well brother i've used your use you in his example that i'm using willie fritz now as well oh yeah by, amazing by coaches getting believed in by their athletic directors because yours didn't necessarily you know like i'm saying they kept you when they could have i just remember watching your games where i'd come alone sometimes mm -hmm. or you know with my ex or maybe with john brady i'd say I just watched the way that you were coached. I'm like, these guys know their X's and O's. They're going to get better when he gets better talent. And, dude, and I remember I, I, I got chills right now thinking about that 17 team. I really do. And then you had that great run last year when I was at WWL. You won, like, a dozen games in a row or something. Right. It was, like, on a roll. So I feel it. Not like you. I'm not taking it home. But I do feel it, man. I'm happy when you win. I appreciate it. Yeah, it means, I do. It means a lot. You're one of my favorite guys, man. Thank you. I mean, appreciate I you. feel like I know you well. We've been around <laughs> each other for 10 years. Uh, gosh, you were doing the radio shows with me on WIST. Correct. That's a long time ago. That's over 10 years ago. But here's a nice gift certificate of you and Tony. Thank you. Um, Date night. That's more of a wine thing. You can get a babysitter. You don't want kids drinking wine. Uh, not yet. And then you got task performance. Do you like task? Bamboo. The best fabric in it. Hey, coming and going. Camera. Do the commercial. Ba Bamboo <laughs> cotton. The softest, most performance-based fabric in the world. And that wasn't even planned, y'all. I know you don't think it Based here in New Orleans. All right. I got, I got to get You got to support these people. All right. All right support man. them. All right, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep, you got support it. the UNO privateers. I'm going. I'm not going to go to Hammond on Thursday, but, but I'm going. 
to UNO on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Check them out. That's a big rivalry. That's a fun rivalry. The Lions versus the Privateers. These games always mean something, and I know they're passionate about when they play each other. Uh, I want to thank you again. Thanks. All right. That's Mark Schlesinger. Hey, coming up next, we're going to call kind of like we did with, with, uh, with Fletcher Mackle earlier, except not going to talk about twins. We're going to talk about New Orleans sports with my man Frank Duffy. You know who he is. He's coming up right next. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, I want to thank Fletcher. What, how much fun was that guy? He can just talk and talk, and it's always entertaining. And then Mark Schlesinger was very reflective, and I enjoyed that. And you need to go out and support that UNO team. Please do. They're going to be playing Saturday right there on the lakefront. But my next guest, he's been coming on a lot lately, kind of like Lion Jalen did a few years ago. He's a guy that goes to many of the LSU games, many of the Tulane games, and more importantly, he's a New Orleanian that grew up here. He's in Atlanta now, but he's here half the time still. I love that. And he loves... New Orleans as a city. He loves the sports in New Orleans. He loves the culture in New Orleans, and he is New Orleans to me. His name is Frank Duffy, and he's back. Hey, bro. Doctor. Great to see you, man. You know, as I know always. Doc Tishner. Dr. Tishner is uh, a famous um, mouthwash, hmm? but I think you, your years at LSU, because that was your nickname, Doc Tishner. Yeah, Doc. yeah I wound up having uh, some of my good fraternity brothers pour an entire bottle uh, is that of, how it came of, about? of antiseptic in my bed, and I woke up, couldn't even feel my back, hardly walked, and then by the time I went down to lunch at the Kappa Sigma house, I had a new nickname. It's stuck for now almost 45 That's years. say, I did never knew the, the yep, origination of the nickname, but I know you made it fly off the shelves and see at the at the Walgreens <laughs> back in the day. Because, I mean, listen, I never had Dr. Tishner until I met you. By it's the way, a, a famous New Orleanian he, during the Civil War, Dr. Tishner invented? came up with the antiseptic and saved many lives because he he, he came up with that here in New Orleans. We're going to change this to the History Channel show. That's right. Hey, listen, we learn facts here. I love That's it. Right. I didn't know that one either, and yeah. I'm all about facts. Yeah. Uh, speaking of facts, there's no doubt in my mind that Joe Burrow has become an elite, elite quarterback. We all knew down yeah. here in the by you how great he was we saw the magical year but I don't know nationally if he people even with the number one overall pick I know he got respect around it but this guy is proving that you have to put his name in there every time you mention Mahomes Allen or any of the other great young quarterbacks he's got to be right there. well I even heard uh, during the game one of the announcers go you almost have to put him in that that group that's considered that I'm like what do you mean in the group yeah, yeah. It's wake the up man's, in the, the group. man's leading the group I mean you he he brought him one play away you From know winning the Super Jam Bowl. Jamar was wide open on that last play when he got sacked on fourth down if that tackle would have held his block he, he's already got a ring he, he he was one play away from giving you and me a good vacation yes it was we both had at 35 to 1 long term at 39 <laughs> to 1 early in the season on the Bengals That's right nobody thought that they would get this far and they kept doing it. but they're doing it again they're back in us the, they've had and even this game you know last year the Bengals and we're going to talk a little about this great matchup Bengals Chiefs last year there was the same matchup in the same venue and they Won this game last year as a yeah. huge surprise to many. Both of us overtime loved it. winner. We both of us liked the Bengals in that one, but now yep. I think the country's like this is going to be kind of a toss. Saw what the line did. It went from the huge. Chiefs being in favor. Now the Bengals are, are on two the favorites. road. The yes. Bengals are favored. Wow, that's yes. respect right there. But right. he's deserved it, man. I mean, listen, this team. Love this kid. Love this kid. Their last year they were considered with the Achilles heel was that offensive line, and rightfully so. That he got sacked yep. so many times. They rebuilt the line, right? But with Lyle Le Collins coming in, unfortunately, he got hurt. But, but going into this last game, that was considered one of the things why yeah. the Bills were going to win besides, you know, being at home and having the 13-1 streak at home in the playoffs. But the fact is, is that that line held That's up. That's right. And that was a makeshift line. Yes. And when I saw that, and I said, okay, with the weapons he has, Mixon and Piran. And his fast delivery. Crazy. I mean, it was on display. You know, people have yeah. made the comparison to Joe Montana. Joe yeah. Cool, right? And and think of Joe Montana's release back in that in that uh, you know, West Coast offense back in the 80s. Well, Joe does the exact same thing. He was on spot on on those passes. And I mean, boom, one, two, out. And you saw that the entire game. Buffalo couldn't get a, couldn't get a rush on him. Yeah, Joe Burrow, something else. Let me be serious. Now he's got – when they got Jamar Chase, and I know uh -huh. the rest of the country was like, they're probably placating him because they played so well in college. We knew 
that all he oh, needed yeah. was that weapon. Absolutely. And when he got that weapon, T. Higgins was great. But T. Higgins is great now because of Jamar. Absolutely. And, and Boyd and Hurst. I right. mean, they have weapons yeah. all over yeah. the place. And you Mixon know, and P. Ryan. Joe, Joe Mixon and P. Ryan. Yeah. P. Ryan, you know, he's awesome catching those balls coming out of the yeah. backfield. Yeah. And he's tough. He's a tough runner. But Mixon, Mixon's a guy that can get you 125 yards Easy. a game. You don't get Easy. him on the line, he's in that secondary. He it's balls in the 50 out of the yeah, absolutely. He can, he can do I love good. him this week against Kansas City. I love him going in yeah, there. Yeah, I do too. And it's nice to have a little cushion. To, to love him even more. All right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I like that little angle shot. I hadn't seen that one. That was kind of nice. Hey, but by the way, uh, this matchup, the other side's Pat Mahomes. And, and mm -hmm. let's be honest, I mean, there's a guy that wasn't the top pick of the draft. I mean, there were quarterbacks taken ahead of him. Uh, Sean Payton knew yes, how great he did. this guy possibly yeah. he how was close that could be have been. the 30th pick of the first round yep. just a few days before the draft. He bolted up, and then we got know, beat out by one spot. 11. And then the Chiefs traded up right after Correct. to 10 to grab him. But this is a 10th pick been. of the draft, which is still high. But let's get, be honest. His accolades and what he's done, win-loss record, yards, by every oh. measure. And even when he lost his receiver, Tyree Kill this yep. year, he has still managed to do it. And his arm angles, everything else. And lost Clyde. And he's Edwards phenomenal. Hilaire. He he's lost phenomenal. him as well. well. Talk about what you like about well, him. Well, I, I, love, I love the fact that he has all different types of throws. He yeah. can go over the top. He's got a big arm. But he also has that baseball throw, right? Just like his, his dad, dad right? His dad pitcher, right? Throw, throws it out to the side. And that's when you get those release. Clyde, you know, and, 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 you know, the thing that I like about Kansas City and why they've been in five now consecutive AFC that's championship games. Man. That's remarkable. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and you got Travis Kelsey as a tight end. So, you know, you, he also has all the weapons. This is going to be a matchup you're going to see for many years. Yeah. Mahomes and Burrow. And, and look, with all due respect to Josh Allen, I like both of these more than I like Josh Allen. And, 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 and this game's going to be, but how much does he have? That ankle. We don't know what he's going to have. And look, it's always tougher the next couple of days when you have a high ankle sprain like that. I mean, you can have, you can have the adrenaline going and get taped up and finish a game like he did. But what's it going to be like today and tomorrow in that training room? We don't know what he's going to come out doing. I love Joe Burrow's chances. I love Cincinnati's chances of going. They're road warriors. Look at this streak that they're on. I mean, they didn't start that well this no, year. 0-2. No, 0-2. Man, they're, they're on such a two streak. since then. Think about that. They're 14 and two since then, and I'm, I'm just yeah, that's right. 14. Yeah. But the fact is, is uh, that game's at 5:30 locally mm -hmm. here on Sunday. That's going right. to be must view. I bet there's a lot of Sunday parties, almost like a mini Super Bowl party, right? Who dat who day, baby? I mean, for right, who dat who day. Um, but you, you're thinking the Bengals. By the way, I do. The Bengals defense has been. Did you watch the first? Absolutely, they were all over. They were all over Allen in that game. Allen usually escapes to get yards on his feet when he. Well, doesn't. well, like I texted you when we watched the game, the first guy to hit him normally doesn't Never, bring him down. Right. Doesn't get him down. But the great thing about t of, uh, uh, Cincinnati's defense was the second and third guys were right there. Yeah. They had the right pressure on them. They were blitzing all day. They were sent, and, and look, kudos to, uh, to Cincinnati's defense. They were sending him from all different locations. He could never get set back there. He could never get comfortable back there. And in those types of conditions, I mean, that's Buffalo weather, right? Yeah. Cincinnati didn't care. They'll, they'll play you in the street. They'll play you in the parking lot. That's how tough this Cincinnati's well, team is. Well, let's talk about this other matchup because this one is just as juicy uh, to me. And these are great stories here. Let me go ahead and just start here. Because we're in a C people, the Saints, mm -hmm. but I got to give credit and, and, and kudos to both these franchises. The Eagles made, made the offseason moves. Mm -hmm. They pulled in, you know, the guy leading the league in interceptions, at least at one point this season, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Oh, uh, don't get me ill. But we man. can go on and on Ugh. about what they've done. But the quarterback story here, you see both of them right there face to face. Jalen Hurts is one of the great stories yes. in, in football to me. And, and Brock Purdy is now becoming an equally good story. Brock Purdy is 7-0 and right now uh, in his first seven games ever. Jalen Hurts is a guy that, after winning a national championship in Alabama, was cast off. I know he was. And, and to a, rightfully so in some ways. But this guy didn't hold his head down. He held it up high, went to Oklahoma, had a great year, and he's been a great pro quarterback when everybody said he couldn't do it. And this guy has been one of the – 
the best quarterbacks in the league since he's, he's a been foxhole it. teammate yeah, is yes. what he is yeah, and, yes. and, and he took the demotion with Tua at Alabama did the right thing went out to Oklahoma lived to play another day yeah but now I mean look what look what happened to the Philadelphia when he was sitting out those yep. couple of games yeah, yeah, yeah. they were not that same team no. Saints went in there no beat him and you and you know you had that game as yeah, well you yeah, call yeah. that one beforehand straight up <laughs> Jalen Hurts let me tell you Jalen Hurts is the type of player that can will a team to look what they did against the Giants. I mean, that was decimation, right? But look out for San Francisco. No, this is nice. This this kid, you know, the last draft pick this year. The last was, draft pick. I know most people know that now, but there's viewers here, I guarantee that still don't know it. Um, he was the very last pick of the draft. Those guys yeah. rarely make the team. No. If they do, they're on the practice squad. He started seven games to go to towards the Super Bowl. They, they, they. It was, it was like a highlight sling, man. They just when he came in, it was like they, they got a second win. And I've, lo- in fact, I, I bet San Francisco. I got them in the Super Bowl, and I got Joe in the Super Bowl. Oh, you talking about your, your, your futures bet? Yeah, absolutely. That was like me last year. I did two, few, two futures bets. You know, and they're both so, the Rams. So I've got them both. I hope they both make it in there. I can watch that pressure oh, yeah. free. But but I love what I loved about San Francisco is they were they were peaking at the right time. Yeah. And you know they did that last year. I mean they were they were one play or two plays this away from beating the Rams to go very in. slow again this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Garoppolo had a great season. Don't tell you when he played and he won himself some money wherever he goes next. But Purdy is taking a job from a guy that was they traded all these number yes. one picks to get Trey Lance. Yes. And Trey Lance might not have a job. And next look year. and look the offense might not be the big story. It might be the defense. These are the top yeah. two defenses in the league there that are going to be playing against. Well, on cue right here, Joey Bosa. I mean, Nick Bosa. This is Nick Bosa. Yep. Nick Bosa, Joey's brother who plays the Chargers. This guy can win games by himself, and that's rare in the NFL. Reggie White, guys like Lawrence Taylor. But, son, you got to harness it. you got to be careful. But that his was a, brother's the one. I'm, but, his I, brother's I, the I, one that gets the penalties. Not bo- him. Both of them can have a little hot head about Joey's him. Joey's much hotter, though. I, you, you know, Nick Bosa's. He's channel good. it. Channel it. Yeah. But I, I will say, I think this game is going to be a close, low-scoring game. I, 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 I would not I would not branch no, out and I go over. I, I think it's going to be a tough ball game. And and Philadelphia, I I, I don't know. I, I have no I have no dog in this fight other than I got the futures. They're both they're both they're good. They're both tough teams. Yeah. But I think the team I I think the team that wins the AFC game is going to be in a driver's seat for the NFL for the Super Bowl. Man, I really I, do. I've, 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 it, Okay. Because, I, because, I want because, to say the same thing. Because if Kansas I want to say City, the same thing, but it always never happens. Scally, before. because if Kansas City does win, it's two more weeks. He's got my college nickname thrown at me. All right. But, but <laughs> it's two more weeks for Mahomes to, get, Mahomes to get healthy. I think it's the AFC's year. No, it could be. I mean, listen, I'm on face value, me too. And everybody's been saying it all year. But when it got down to the Final Four, and even, even the eight, really the Final Four, I think these four teams are the four yes, best right no now. Doubt. I agree. They're the four best right now, and that's what we all want to see. We're going to have a great weekend of football. you got the Privateers basketball, too, this weekend. And, by the way, Tulane basketball has been so exciting. Pelicans are going to get it back. And while we have one minute, we're closing right yep. now because I am on a sharp thing to get out of here. But the thing is, like, Pelicans right now, you, Tough four-game stretch. But, but so what? But when you they know, get healthy, man, the they're going to be ready for that run. Let me tell you something. We get B.I. and we get Zion back. Let me tell you something. You don't want the face of Pelicans in the playoffs this you year. You don't want none of this. You don't want you none don't of want this, this, baby. That's a double negative. Yeah, right. right. You know, you don't want a Smoothie Kings can be I'm, rocking. You I'm watch. sorry, Dr. Byrne, my AP English class. <laughs> but we don't want none of this. They don't double want none negative, of this. baby. Yeah, there you go. The double <laughs> neg- double <laughs> negatives became popular. Mr. Teresa Neves, accountant, Presbyterian, would be, would be shocked. Who was your teacher there? Miss Neves. I remember like Ms. it was Neves. yesterday. Of course you do. Composition, I, I can tell baby. You all my English teachers, that's one, one class I did well in. <laughs> 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 That's one class I did. Well. <laughs> I, might, I might not speak great English, but at least I know how to write it. All right, so here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna close the show like this. Yeah. Uh, here, task performance. You know the drill. Thank you. And of course, awesome bamboo, man. I love these for working out. Thank you, Scotty. Yeah, man, that's a good-looking shirt. Too. Oh, Chase Delache, man. You and I had dinner there what about a month ago, man. Well, I wasn't we with you. It. I wasn't well, with you. Well, <laughs> who, say, who, who was it with me? me? I thought it was you. That no, I wasn't. I wish I hadn't been a minute. Uh, but I'd like to get back there. Yep. I do go see Evan and Delachaise is closer. But hey, I had a great show, buddy. Buddy. Appreciate you. Frank Duffy, awesome, always man. fun. Yep. 
You know, he's kind of become my, my light lion's yelling who I used to bring in <laughs> once a month back in the day when I first started. But lots of folks back there that are on it all the time. They might not get eight off and They might throw Mahomes up. We're talking about Burrow. But these are the best in the business, and I would not want to do this show anywhere else because of Will Hill right there as the, as the producer, director. He does everything behind the scenes. And then Logan and Alex, too. They do such a good job. Jim and, obviously, uh, my man, former Ron Foreman, run this station. So thank you yep. all right here. Come back next week because we're going to have so much fun again right here on Primetime Sports.